you guys are both, you know, believers. And so I'd love to hear about like what your journey was like into that. And, uh, you know, maybe y'all can, I don't know, dissect some stuff. Believers or believers? But, also, like, uh, also well, love Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Yeah, I'm a believer too. He's so funny. He makes everything out of a joke. <laughs> we can, I know. I didn't mean to say that. No, that was funny. It's That's dope. why we're renegotiating no. our splits because he can't take none seriously. <laughs> Do I have cancer? So or am I born in June? <laughs> <laughs> Go the oh, let's, go. let's go. He's like that's a walking funny, family guy character, bro. That's so okay, funny. So my main question, man, is where where does it originate? You know, like yeah. for me, it was my family. Yeah. Um. What about you? Train up a child in a way, and they'll never depart from it. Uh. Yeah, I think it's uh, my my journey was like very personal. Mom grew up in the church. My mom uh was a you know I'm talking about like she kind of still is a little bit, but not too much. But she was like a Pentecostal like church going shouting shouting you know uh we cloth went, on the forehead went to a baptist church you know my kind of my whole life right and then she was like you gotta go to church every day mm-hmm. every sunday every tuesday every like and i was going to church a lot and uh <laughs> when i turned like i think it was like 14 15 maybe she gave me an option she was like hey do you want to go to church this sunday and i love my mom for this by the way and i was like no i don't and she was like okay like there was no like fighting this was when you were like 14 15 got you she okay. didn't fight me on it mm-hmm. She was just like, you don't feel like going? That's, that's fine. That's good. And she still went, and she still did her thing. She never hounded me. She would always say things like, you know, uh, you know, God is good. And she would talk about God. She wasn't afraid of her faith. And uh, I became like a devout atheist, right? I was like converting my friends at school. Like, man, how do you know this? Like, and I was breaking apart the Bible, and I was like really, like really telling my friends, like, there is no God. Uh, and that journey was interesting because I'm in a household with a, a like a devote Christian, like she was like going to church and uh-huh. her son who I was like the, everybody used to be like, Oh Norman, he's going to be so special. He's going to be a little whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm in high school, I'm straight up atheist. Like I don't believe in this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was crazy because I saw no logic in it. I was like, where's the logic? Where's the logic? I was like, All of y'all are crazy. Like y'all be praying for stuff. I'm like, I'm broke. My mom go to church every Sunday. She giving her money to the pastor. We broke. Mm-hmm. They ain't never paid my rent. Like, yeah, you know, they ain't making me rich. He got a Bentley. I said it in one of my songs. The pa- pastor in the Bentley while we walk into his ministry, the industry instantly take a liking to you and me. Uh, but and I was like, the church did worse to us than Liver King. But mm-hmm. anyways, um, that's what I meant. Like, I was like, literally, like, there were times where we had to catch cabs, walk to church, or catch the bus. Like, my mom was, like, really trying to go to church. And, and still paying tithes. Yeah, and yeah, like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, bro, this don't make no sense. Uh, so my faith journey is a, like a lot different. Like I didn't just grow up like believing in it. Mm-hmm. So how, how how did you? I'm on the edge of my seat, bro. How, yeah. So how yeah. was that journey back into faith? Uh, Frank Turek, uh, and yeah, Frank Turek. Yo, I'm yeah. telling you, bro. I'm telling. <laughs> hey, y- y'all are a match made so, in heaven, bro. So for Frank real. Frank Turek. Uh, this is a very logical person. Yeah, yeah. And then I like you know I like John Lennox. Yeah, John and Lennox. Stephen Meyer. Yeah, John. my favorite's actually um Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. So <laughs> John Lennox is dope too. John Lennox is dope. He's a mathematician. Did he uh, write the Bible? Yeah, he, he <laughs> didn't he debate uh, Dawkins or Hawkins or he debated somebody. John Lennox debated Dawkins. Yeah. 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 So anyway, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, it was it was Frank Turek, and then it introduced me to a guy named Vody Bakum. Mm. Uh, and then like Vody Bakum was real like monumental too because I never really saw like black men in, in that space, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, now I get the like now I'm getting the the knowledge side of it, the logical side, right? Where people aren't just talking about God is so good and. We're raising our hands. And yes. You're holy. Our God. Our bro, God is I, awesome. If you know him, let's sway with me yeah, right yeah, now. Bro. That's Dude, a good point, man. Yeah. I had someone ask me, my mom actually, she yeah. asked me because she was straight up just the most, caught, it caught me off guard a lot yeah. when she asked me. She goes, yeah, people, she's like, people say like, uh, you know, God loves me and I, and, um, and he loves me unconditionally, but like, yeah. why should I love him? Right. And it was such a basic question, but I was like, yeah, she, or she has nothing in her life that represents yeah. what from what she was looking at, nothing in her life that represents anything good to her. Yeah. You know, she was in prison for, you know, at least six years of her life. Dang. She lives in a trailer. She got no job, no car, no money. So it's like, yeah. she, I, it's a hard question to answer. Yeah. So I, I get that. It's like, how do you find the logic in an illogical yeah. situation? And so I'm curious to hear where you're, because I don't, I don't come from that at yeah. all. It, I, honestly, bro, I think it's just one of those things where like, if you're chosen, you're chosen. Like, I, I, I strongly believe that. And a lot mm-hmm. of people are put off by that. And I think that, like, if you understand it, you understand it. And if you don't, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And we can still we can still come together. We can have conversations. Like, I don't understand why people are so dead set on, you know, like, 
I get it. It's important to try to like convert people and help people, mm-hmm. but you're doing more damage than you are doing good because then you get egos in the way. We're humans. Mm-hmm. We're, we're we're fallen people. That's literally the that's the bro. That is literally the thesis of the Bible. Like we are falling and we need a savior. Right. We are we are, we are flawed people. Mm-hmm. So what makes me think that a flawed man is going to do justice at explaining something that is way beyond our understanding? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think um, yeah, I think that's a really interesting perspective, and I th- I, I do think it depends on whether or not that person is looking because I can't convince you of anything if you're dead set on not believing it or if you're not like open to that. Um, what I do think, and, and this is a, a quote through Dennis Prager yeah. from somebody else, I can't remember, but essentially the the theme was that the best way to convert people to Christianity is by being a good Christian and the best way to push them away from Christianity is by being a bad Christian. Meaning like, you know what I'm saying? You profess to be to believe these things and yeah. be good, but you're not, but you're not acting it out. And therefore yeah. I, I feel like this whole thing is hypocritical, yeah. but I feel like some of the greatest, uh, some of my, the, the greatest people that I know that are believers yeah. is like, they've never really e- explicitly yeah. just had religious conversations or tried to push that. Yeah. yeah. It was always a situation where like, maybe I would ask a question or maybe we somehow it would come up in conversation, but, but, the, the purity, though, yeah. the commitment to betterment of self and, and dissolution of the ego, that came through. And then you start to you start to go, you start to go, oh, OK, like this person seems really happy and joyful and peaceful and they forgive people. And like these are all admirable traits. Yeah. Why is that? Oh, and, and you could ask them and they'll be like, well, I mean, you know, I have a relationship with God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think that that, that maybe is like a almost a middle ground from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? From from doing this thing where I'm like, bro, you, trust me, you got to believe. Yeah, you got to believe. Facts, facts. You know what I'm saying? But but rather just being like, yo, like I'm going to just be an effector of yeah. good yeah. and other people will pick up on that. And if when, when the conversation happens, when they're actually looking yeah, for yeah, it, yeah, yeah. you got it. That's that's synonymous, facts, though. Right. I feel I, like you do that, too, by the way. I appreciate to that. give you credit. Thanks, man. And I, I, I definitely look up to people who do that as yeah, well. And, right and I'm I'm like two years into my faith my relationship with God. So I'm so new. Yeah. So I'm learning a lot. And I, I think that's what Nate said is a good yeah. um, assessment of that. And I also had a realization in the last couple of weeks though, which was like Jesus. I mean, the entire Christian faith is based around that idea as well. Like yeah. the whole Bible is a collection of stories. And every time that Jesus walks the streets, yeah. it's always people hearing of this man named Jesus. And they have to find that person yeah. and they have to seek that story. Yeah. And he's always been a storyteller. And I, and that made me really think, like, okay, so are people, like Nate, looking at, you know, you know, I don't know if you know No Big Deal and these people, but, like, other Christian artists, are you looking, is, are my friends looking at me as I act and interact with the world and if, you know, the way that I interact with conflict? And does that represent, is that going to later represent any change of heart in their faith? And I was like, probably so. That's how I went, and I didn't think, when I really think about it, I was like, when I had my moment of coming to Jesus, what happened was, I won't even get to the story, but what happened was I was like, okay, I'm, I deal with, I have all this conflict in my life, yeah. and I'm trying to think of the best way to deal with it, and just like you said, what was the quote about family? You grew up Christian, I said something about like, uh, when I first said, my, I came from my family. What'd you say? <laughs> something. I said something. I don't you know. said something, but it was a good quote. I, I wish I remembered it, but it was a good quote. You pretty much what I what I resulted back to was, how would my dad handle this? And then, oh, train a child in a way so they never depart from exactly that scripture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, that's a good verse. I need to put that in my in my notes. But um, hey, he, Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> Greg, Greg is a, Greg is our Jamie. Hey, Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> train a child in a way. Um, I think that's Psalms. I guess Aliki and Greg are yeah, Jamie. Songs, songs, They're like a, yeah, songs. But um, songs. Yeah, I think David wrote that. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. Hey. I could be. I could be wrong. But yeah, man, I I, I thought about that, and I my, before I went got to Jesus, I was like, well, you know, he probably would have done it this way, and then I was like, but at the end of the day, he actually would have just yeah. brought it to God. Yeah. And then it made me think about what that looks like because I don't even know what's it mean. And like to bring why? It. Yeah, well, I was like, what does it mean to bring it to God? I don't know. Would I go to yeah. church because that's what I do yeah. when I was a kid. So it's like. Yeah. Then I go to church and then all the answers kind of fall apart. Yeah. You know man, I mean? man, you know, it's so interesting, though. So I feel like j- j- you just Frank Turek, Stephen Meyer, John Lennox, the fact yeah. that you guys even know yeah, these yeah. people. So as a kid, it's like 
we're learning about stories. We're learning about this, but there, there's not this connection of depth. And part of that is just our immaturity because we're not able to conceptualize that or even think we're thinking about going home and playing video games. We don't have that. We don't really understand the whole s- scope and scheme of things yeah. until you live some life and you start to realize like why religion even exists in the first place. That's like, true too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, true. as a kid though, I mean, and it's understandable though, yeah. as a kid, you're not supposed to really have answers to those types of questions. But then when you get to reenter it, it's like, the thing is like my parents though, never got to that level of depth. Yeah. My parents, my parents, you know, especially my mom, she always just understood Christianity from like a, to me, like a very just cultural level. Like yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just like you, you're supposed to believe in God. You right. know, like, like, right. But Why that's, not? but that's not sufficient for me. It wasn't sufficient for you. It had you move Truly. away. And so, but, but now I wonder if we'll be, you know, whenever we have kids, you already have kids. So maybe, maybe you could speak to this um, and then we can pivot off of religion. But I wonder if as we step into like, you know, having touched this, are we able to communicate the, 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 Intr- fi- the, yeah. the, the philosophical importance yeah. of those things, distill it. To, to, to kids in a way that, you know... It's palpable. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, bro. I don't know if we'll ever have the answer for that because... Um, but I would tell you this. Like, over time, you know, there have there have been a lot of stories that haven't held up as well as, you know, the gospel. Yeah. There have been a lot of things that haven't lasted as long as the gospel. Bro, I, I love that conversation. Yeah. And the reason I want to ask you this yeah. is... With your newfound, I guess, logical explanation of faith, yeah. did you ever go back and chat with your mom about any of these types of Oh, yeah, I talked to everybody. I lost friends. <laughs> Funny story is like when the I first— The friends that you converted to atheism? Bro, when I first— Bro, <laughs> when I first— You're like, I'm oh, sorry, guys, I was wrong. I, I, I found all these smart people, and I'm like, dang, these, these people are smart as heck. Yeah. And uh, I was like, bro, I got to go tell all my partners about it. And we were like talking, and they were like, Norman, shut up. And I'm like, but look, bro, this is life or death. Like, you know, and I'm, yeah. I was so, you know, uh, bro, I was so zealous, like overzealous to the point to where, like, I was condemning everything. Right. And um, I remember having these conversations with everybody, and they were just, like, so put off by What about it. your mom, though? Specific- yeah, every- the reason I asked about yeah. your mom specifically is because the, my experience was that I thought that I had come across these, yeah. like, life-changing, logical, yeah. scientific explanations for why God is logical. And then I used to think that my grandma and my dad's, conversation about God was always rudimentary. Yeah. And then I went back and I found out they were way more tapped in yeah. than I ever imagined. Well, yeah, so I'm, I mean, cu- I'm curious about what your experience is. I, I ran it like, so no, my wife and I went to school for theology, right? So I was writing a pa- like a paper on the uh, tithing. And I remember talking to my mom about it because she went to a church where they were like heavy on tithing. And I was talking about, you know, free, freely giving and how the tithing, the system of tithing is corrupt. And, you know, to a certain degree, like, Everything I was saying made sense to me, but it still didn't make sense to her. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, I, I had a ton of conversations with my mom about, like, her faith, trying to get deeper, but realizing that where she was at, it was enough for her. So then I, I kind of stopped pushing because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, now I'm, now I'm seeing the error in my ego. Yeah, 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 yeah. truly, like, truly. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I'm like, I wanted to, oh, talk about these deep things and, like, how, did you know, like, science says this and the Bible, Gen- Genesis 1-1. Yep. And I'm, I'm yep. like, speaking Hebrew, like, at this time. So I'm like, let's read better sheep. And like and like we're talking about the Hebrew language and I'm yeah. talking about how every letter, all the twenty like the Olive Bet. And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, oh, you check this out. The the old testament explains the new testament. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's cool, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got so you. Like, does it make you love God more? Yeah, like but yeah. does it really though? Yeah, right, right. You know, like, and I think at that point I'm just flexing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah baby, need top five when I'm done going mental. Yeah, I'm like then you can peep my condition and the lab all winner. All summer. Yeah, I went down.